Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow denarian friends to help support our channel. Believe me it makes a huge difference and I appreciate it very much. Please take the time and check out our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the dinar community. You can use the promo code, the denarian, and get 25% off along with the mobile application for free. I also highly recommend you register as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program. It is extremely important you protect your savings from the failing fiat dollar. They are crashing the fiat US dollar. This is a fact not speculation. As the dollar goes down gold goes up. Now is the time to get involved if you have not already done so. If you have, congratulations, you will be part of the 20% that make it through this. Watch the tutorial videos on your personal dashboard and you'll have my personal contact information in there also. Contact me if you have any questions, I'm in there to help you as well. Both of the links are in the description below. I would like to congratulate the President for doing a great job today in securing the Phase 1 trade agreement with China. You will see in a moment why it was so important and how it relates to our blessing. You see. The world needed this part of the agreement signed, not only for trade, but to prevent China from manipulating their currency rates. Here is Chapter 5 from the important Phase 1 trade agreement signed into effect today by our beloved President. I also put a link to the full document in the description below. Economic and Trade Agreement Between the United States of America and the People's Republic of China Phase 1 Chapter 5 Macroeconomic Policies and Exchange Rate Matters and Transparency Article 5.1 General Provisions 1. Each party shall respect the other party's autonomy in monetary policy, in accordance with its domestic law. 2. The parties recognize that strong fundamentals, sound policies, and a resilient international monetary system are essential to the stability of exchange rates, contributing to strong and sustainable growth and investment. Flexible exchange rates, where feasible, can serve as a shock absorber. 3. The parties share the objective of pursuing policies that strengthen underlying economic fundamentals, foster growth and transparency, and avoid unsustainable external imbalances. 4. The parties shall honor currency-related commitments each has undertaken in G20. Communiques including to refrain from competitive devaluations and the targeting of exchange rates for competitive purposes. Article 5.2 Exchange Rate Practices 1. Each party confirms that it is bound under the International Monetary Fund IMF, Articles of Agreement to avoid manipulating exchange rates or the international monetary system in order to prevent effective balance of payments adjustment or to gain an unfair Competitive advantage. 2. Each party should achieve and maintain a market determined exchange rate regime and strengthen underlying economic fundamentals, which reinforces the conditions for macroeconomic and exchange rate stability. 3. The parties shall refrain from competitive devaluations and not target exchange rates for competitive purposes, including through large scale, persistent one-sided intervention in exchange markets. 4. The parties will communicate regularly and consult on foreign exchange markets, activities, and policies. The parties will consult with each other regarding the IMF's assessment of the exchange rate of each party. Article 5.3 Transparency 1. The parties affirm that they shall continue to disclose publicly within the prescribed Time frames below, monthly foreign exchange reserves data in forward positions according to the IMF's data template on international reserves in foreign currency liquidity, no later than 30 days after the end of each month. Quarterly balance of payments for the subcomponents of the financial account, including direct investment, portfolio investment, and other investment, loans and receivables, no later than 90 days after the end of each quarter, and 
quarterly exports and imports of goods and services comma no later than 90 days after the end of each quarter. 2. The parties reaffirm and shall continue to consent to the public disclosure by the IMF of each IMF article for staff report on the country of the party, including the exchange rate assessment, within four weeks of the IMF executive board discussion, and confirmation of the party's participation in the IMF COFER database. 3. If the IMF does not disclose publicly any items listed in paragraph 2 with respect to a party, that party shall request that the IMF disclose publicly those items. Article 5.4 Enforcement Mechanism 1. Issues related to exchange rate policy or transparency shall be referred by either the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury or the Governor of the People's Bank of China to the bilateral evaluation and dispute resolution arrangement established in Chapter 7, Bilateral Evaluation and Dispute Resolution. 2. If there is failure to arrive at a mutually satisfactory resolution under the bilateral evaluation and dispute resolution arrangement, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury or the Governor of the People's Bank of China may also request that the IMF, consistent with its mandate, undertake rigorous surveillance of the macroeconomic and exchange rate policies and data transparency on reporting policies of the requested part or initiate formal consultations and provide input as appropriate. As you can see now, this was highly relative to our investment as it protects us from currency manipulation by the Republic of China. Trump is no dummy. Next article of interest for today, Al Adder reveals the importance of the financial management law and its link to the budget. Today, Wednesday, member of the Iraqi Economic Council, Ghadir Al Adder, commented on the importance of the new financial management law recently passed by the parliament. Al Adder said in a statement, Tomorrow Press received a copy of it. The financial management law aims to regulate the rules and procedures governing financial and accounting management in the field of planning, preparation, implementation, control and audit of the federal public budget. He added, the law will direct all federal revenues to the public treasury to cover public expenditures, determine the internal control units link in administrative and technical terms establish mechanisms related to budget implementation, the commitment of each implementing agency, and determine the responsibility of the Ministry of Finance in the implementation phase. Al Latter indicated that, through the financial management law, it will be possible to set specific dates to present the final accounts and adhere to the principles of the budget, budget transparency, budget comprehensiveness, budget unity, annual budget, and non-allocation when preparing and implementing the federal public budget and related matters in a manner that ensures the stability of the economy macro and financial stability, enhancing budget allocation, improving spending efficiency and effectiveness, ensuring optimal cash management and improving the quality of budget information provided to the House of Representatives and public opinion. The House of Representatives voted in its session yesterday, Monday, to amend the financial management law. Next article of interest. Learn about the American character who secretly arrived at Baghdad International Airport in Ain al-Assad base. A parliamentary source inside the Parliamentary Security and Defense Committee revealed, on Monday, the American character who arrived in the capital, Baghdad, through its international airport in Ain al-Assad base in Anbar province, in secret. The source said in a statement to the information that American Vice President Michael Pence arrived last Friday to Baghdad International Airport secretly and was transferred to Ain al-Assad base in Anbar Governorate via Apache planes, pointing out that Pence was transported with heavy guard by the American aviation and a squadron of Apache aircraft. He added that Pence's visit came to know the extent of the damage left by the Iranian strike in the runway of the base of Ain al-Assad which removed it from service and the size of the losses in the American military barracks, noting that Pence did not meet with the resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi and moved with great secrecy for his fear of targeting. It is noteworthy that last Friday, Baghdad International Airport witnessed an intense flight of the American planes, 
after the arrival of an unidentified figure from the Trump government. Next article of interest, Government Advisor, 2020 Budget is Ready and Finance and Will Include China Agreement. Advisor to the Prime Minister, Maza R. Mohammed Saleh, announced that the current 2020 budget is ready in the Ministry of Finance. Saleh said that the budget was approved by the Cabinet before the resignation of the government, but the Student Council re-engineered again and consider some paragraphs of spending and then be transferred to the Ministry of Finance in preparation to be sent to the Parliament. He stressed that, currently the budget ready for the financial, and called, the Parliament to claiming it to be informed about what paves the way for its legislation. Saleh pointed out that the budget will include listing the most prominent projects that will be implemented by China for the purpose of passing it in Parliament. And, next article of interest. Abdul Mada's advisor explains about the Iraq-China agreement. The Prime Minister's advisor for financial affairs, Maza R. Mohammed Saleh, revealed on Tuesday, January 15, 2020, New details about the most prominent offer of the agreement between Iraq and China, indicating that the agreement will focus on implementing infrastructure projects. Saleh said in a press statement, the agreement includes the exchange of oil revenues for the implementation of projects in Iraq, noting that the Iraqi government opened a credit account in one of the sober Chinese banks to deposit oil revenues of 100,000 barrels per day within the Chinese agreement. He added that, this account is spent on companies that implement projects, noting that, the agreement will focus on infrastructure projects such as schools, hospitals, roads, electricity and sanitation, to be determined through the Ministry of Planning and in coordination with the Council of Ministers. Saleh added that, the agreement will provide many job opportunities for the unemployed and give an opportunity to the Iraqi private sector companies as well as relying on Iraqi products to implement projects such as cement, bricks, sand and others, noting that, this will create significant economic development in the country, and that, the age of the agreement reaches 20 years, stressing that this agreement will revive the infrastructure of Iraq, which has been destroyed for four decades. On Sunday, January 12, 2020, the Office of the Prime Minister of the Caretaker Government, Adel Abdul Mahdi, sent generals to all ministries and governorates regarding the implementation of the Iraqi-Chinese agreement. A document issued by Abdul Mahdi's office obtained by it, Baghdad Today, stated that, the execution comes with the aim of following up the Iraqi-Chinese agreement and to update project data or add other projects. She added, please provide us with the relevant basic infrastructure projects with accurate detailed statements, that include the projects of schools, hospitals, roads, bridges, water and sewage services, and any other projects. The first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Hassan al kabi had called, on Tuesday, January 7, 2020, the necessity to proceed with the Iraqi-Chinese agreements concluded by the current government in Beijing from now, especially as it provides great opportunities for the reconstruction of Iraq, stressing the cooperation of the legislative and executive authorities to put all measures related to the agreement into effect, and facilitating the entry of major investment companies into the country. Next article of interest. Deputy for Wisdom, calls for the details of the agreement with China to be revealed and clarified, the deputy of the parliamentary bloc of parliament, Hassan Kaladi, called on the government to disclose the details of the agreement between Iraq and China to the Iraqi people and public opinion. In the presence of the large number of ministers and governors, the agreement that the current government concluded with China in the presence of the large number of ministers and governors is that oil for construction is one of the most important agreements the government has concluded in the events of urban renaissance, services, and a major economic jump, he said in a statement. He added, but unfortunately, there is a lot of ambiguity and lack of clarity and confusion about the agreement arising from the lack of clarification by the government of its details. Noting that, everyone understands the importance of the articles of this agreement and its usefulness now and in the future for Iraq, but the absence of detail and disclosure will leave the field wide to those who criticize and defame and weaken from these important agreement. 
we send the letter to the government to disclose, through a government spokesman, in detail about the importance of this agreement and its validity, whether with the presence of this current government or with the advent of the new government because of its great importance in the economic and urban aspect, he added. He pointed out that the demonstrations that took place as a result of the slowdown in services and the implementation of the agreement will be one of the demands of the demonstrations. He noted, the government continued this agreement and implemented it, and the books that were directed to departments, ministries and governorates are evidence of this, but the matter needs to be explained in detail about it. It is reported that Iraq and China signed during the visit of the, resigned government delegation headed by Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi at the end of last September and lasted for several days agreements and memoranda of understanding in the financial, commercial and security fields, construction, communications, culture, education and foreign affairs. Enjoy today's news. Please hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit the Denarian blog and find me on Facebook. Please take a moment and visit our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout along with the mobile application at no extra charge. Also, register as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program today. If you do not keep your savings in an asset like gold, you may lose everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold. I know what you're thinking, gold is too expensive right? This program is made so low-income people can afford to buy gold in small increments, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today, and secure your family's savings. You can always transfer gold into any kind of money you want, the gold will always be in your possession. The gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad, the dollar will not. Ask yourself this. Why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.